Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and today I'm really excited to be unboxing a game called Cloudspire. This comes from Chip Theory Games. The designers you can see in the top left hand corner of the box, Josh Carlson, Adam Carlson and Josh Wilgus. What's really cool about this particular entry into their product line is that this one, as their previous entries, has a major focus in solo play in the core experience. So if you're familiar with games like Hot Hoplomachus and Too Many Bones, very beloved games in the solo community, Cloudspire does that justice in adding a whole bunch of solo content into this base box. Now again, this is a Kickstarter delivery, so in order to purchase this in the future, you need to pick it up straight through their web store on their site or through subsequent Kickstarter campaigns in the future. So without further ado, how about we take a look at the components inside the box. We'll flip this over first and find out a little bit more about what Cloudspire is all about. High above the earth lies the floating realm of Ankar, held in the sky by a powerful energy known only as the Source. The islands of Ankar have existed in peace for centuries. However, as the various factions of Ankar have used and abused the Source, the world has been thrown out of balance. The islands of Ankar historically separated separated from each other, have now crashed together in an event. Arcarians refer to as the Joining. Cloudspire places you in command of one of these unique factions. Assume control of your faction's fortress, heroes, minions, and defensive spires to assert your faction's dominance over Ankar, featuring a fantastic mix of tower defense, kingdom management, and tactics. Cloudspire's asymmetrical gameplay will test your strategic thinking with thrilling competitive play along with full solo and two-player cooperative campaigns. Ready your minions and heroes heroes, the battle is about to begin. As we can see on the back of the box, we have a full visual of what roughly the game would look like set up and placed out. Of course, most things that are missing from this picture would be some of the trays and things that the poker chips are sitting inside of. So there'll be a bit more than this, but this would be the major focus of what you're paying attention to during gameplay. Tiles, your fortress, the minions, the actual world itself. And as you can see behind this box, currently in shot, there's a play mat for Cloudspire, which I'll I'll give you another look at in a second here. We also have the box contents listed down the left hand side of the box, but we're going to see them up close and personal during this video. Here's a look at the Cloudspire Sky Mat. This mat is comprised of all kinds of hexes. In the very center, there is a marking to know exactly where the center hex resides. There are two icons on either opposite corner from each other with the Cloudspire logo as well. And this in size is 40 inches by 35 and a half. Here is a look up close at one of the logos, and again, there are two logos on opposite end corners. The other thing to note about this map is it is stitched. This is a staple of Chip Theory Games products. They do this with Too Many Bones as well. So it's got stitch edging on all sides. It's going to help your play mat in the long term from fraying. It also gives it an aesthetically pleasing look. One thing you're going to notice right off the bat the second you open up the box of Cloudspire is how well packed this box really is. They took a look at every little nook and cranny as they pack this entire game into the box and ensured that this box can be flipped around upside down sideways and not have to worry about anything in the box moving around whatsoever. So I'm going to go ahead now and remove the very first piece here and you can see how thick that is opening up some extra space for storage in the future in the core box as well and you'll see we run right into the Chip Theory Games products so if you want to go ahead and take a look at their products I'd advise you to head to their website and it's chiptheorygames.com you can find all that information in terms of all the products that they have there. It's much easier to do that than going through the booklet here in the video. The next thing you're going to run into is to do with the factions that inhabit Cloudspire. And this sheet right here is really important to show because it does actually have a large impact into how this unboxing is going to unfold in terms of what you'll see inside because some of the components actually aren't inside this core box currently based on how they had to split things up for tariffs and other changes and quick fixes that they wanted to do. So some of these items are not inside the box. You might be wondering, well, how come we didn't land at the rule book as the very first thing we see when we open the box? Well, that's because this note right here explains all 
all that. And I did get these items outside of the core box in order to make swaps with the ones that are inside, to revised versions, etc. But there was a packet of books, these right here, the rule book, solo scenario book, and cooperative scenario book. And those books going forward with Cloudspire, of course, are going to be inside the box going forward. It was just for this particular first time Kickstarter delivery that they were split up. You can see the reasons why up top here as well. So again, just another big, big, big kudos to them because their customer service is spot on. So here is a look at that three booklet pack that they were talking about that's not inside my box, but will be inside future versions going forward of Cloudspire after the Kickstarter is delivered. You can see here we got the solo scenario book, the rule book version 1.0 and cooperative scenarios right here. Again, cooperative scenarios can be used in a solo fashion. So you've got yourself two coil bound books of pure solo potential right there and if you're talking it's page size for these books they are no slouch this one here for solo scenarios goes up to 83 pages we'll take a quick rip through those in a second we got cooperative scenarios over here as i mentioned this particular booklet is a little bit thinner at 55 but still not a slouch and then if we remove both of these from the equation and focus solely on the rule book itself the actual rule book has a total of 30 35 pages. We'll talk about this one first. Okay, let's dive into this rule book together and take a look at a couple of the pages to get an idea of how this thing is laid out. So flipping it over to the very first page, we got a note from CTG in the top left hand corner, uh, reading this rule book section as well. We also have a table of contents right here all the way down and we'll flip right along. You'll see artwork is going to be a theme throughout this all the time. They always do a fantastic job of incorporating that in their rule books. You got your components here. You can double check you have everything you should have inside the box and again, We'll see this stuff up close and personal later on here in the video. Then you're going to go right into the introduction, the objective of what you're doing, and the setup. So it looks very nicely organized and very clean and easy to read. So that's fantastic. Wow. And then every once in a while, you're going to get this amazing artwork in the game as well. They also have a lore book for this game, which has all the artwork. I highly advise checking that out as well. It is really, really crazy looking. So in terms of setup, you've got yourself all the way to 12 by this page and you're on page nine, continuing onwards and bam, you're into the sequence of play itself. And from then on, this is the general look and feel of the rule book going all the way to the final pages here. You've got yourself a nice, this is very handy reference sheet here. And you've also got reference sheets I'm gonna show you inside the box for all the keywords that are gonna be showing up on the chips as you play through the game because you're gonna to need to reference those as there's special abilities on those as well. So going all the way to the very end, of course, it points you to their website and that concludes the 35 pages. They also have a really nice quick reference guide here on the back so you can keep this book closed up during gameplay but still have important information up front. The next book in line is the Cloudspire Solo Scenario Book. I'm really excited to see what's inside of this thing. I have not looked yet, and so with you, this will be the first time I'm seeing it as well. Whenever I see a coil-bound book, which is not that often with the word solo on the front, I mean, they automatically deserve kudos just for catering to us, which I think is awesome. So we're gonna go ahead and open this thing up. Not only is the artwork on the front gorgeous, I cannot wait to see the content of what's inside this 80-page book inside. Okay, first thing we're seeing right off the hop here is the table of contents. You've got your solo rules up top. My guess is this is going to be in addition to what we've seen from the rule book. Next up is the neoprene hex tile key. So that sounds interesting. We'll find out more about that soon. The AI talent triggers master list which sounds like the abilities are changing up on the chips for each of the words for all the core abilities of each of those chips because of course if you're playing in a solo fashion they don't really work like they would with other players anymore. The next one I'm not too sure about actually. I don't know how Renown works in this, but we'll see. And then we've got the solo scenarios per the different factions here. And uh, it might be a campaign that then spans or maybe some branching story across them, or it might be that the story is kind of contained with each of the factions. We'll have to see how that works as well. But that makes up the bulk of things. And then we've got what's called endless mode, which I have no idea about, but it sounds like you're just gonna be probably fighting wave after wave of nastiness coming your way. But that sounds really cool uh, if you want an open-ended type gameplay that doesn't have maybe linkage to story. So the first thing you're gonna see when you open up the book is the solo and co-op mode rules. So I'm not gonna go through all these, uh, but I do have this on screen so you can pause it and read to your heart's content there. 
Moving right over, it's going to talk again at high level. How do these rules work? How does the AI work? All that kind of stuff you're going to find in this as we go along here. Additional rules regarding AI, as I mentioned, ending the scenario. So a couple things that are probably going to change from what you experience reading the main rule book. This is the neoprene hex tile key and now kind of rings a bell a little bit better. This is essentially tying a number to each of the tiles in the game because there's a lot of different tiles that we're going to see when we start going through the box here. And this is going to allow you to understand which tile should be in play when you're setting up a particular solo scenario so that you're not grabbing the wrong one during setup. That's what that key tile or that uh, hex tile key is for. This, on the other hand, if I'm understanding correctly, and this is my best guess here, is that they're taking all of the terminology that you're going to find on chips that would normally cater to having multiple players that you're going up against and changing them to work for AI. That would make logical sense, and I believe that that's what this is all about. So we're moving right into this, which again, this section, I have no idea what this is about, but you can see here it says advantages and effects, renown costs. So maybe something that you can spend to gain some things, maybe to improve your faction. This sounds like kind of like the rewards at the end of a scenario type thing. So you can pause the screen to read to find that out, but I'm just going to keep on moving through the book. Next up, we got chapter number one. So this is where things would start off. Now, again, do you have to start with this uh, particular faction or can you start with another one that I also don't know? Uh, it might be contained in a full story. It might be sectioned off per faction, but hopefully you can pause the screen and read that for yourself. You've also got the wonderful setup here. It now makes a lot more sense about those uh, hex tile keys that I was talking about because now you know exactly what hex to pick. Plus you got the pictures there for reference as well. And then you go into things like objectives, scenario win and loss conditions, AI notes, talent triggers, all the good stuff you need to know. This is something that I think they've already made so much better progress on from Hoplomachus and Too Many Bones is I like the layout of the rules in this particular game already. Uh, and it just, it just flows better. And it also is easier to see. The headers are easier. It's cleaner, crisper, and it almost honestly looks more professional. Uh, I do really like the Too Many Bones rule book, but at times I had tr uh, trouble finding certain rules in certain areas. It looks like they might have categorized this one a little better. Uh, so that's fantastic if that's the case. Um, and then you've got wrap up here at the very bottom. Very important apparently because it's in red. And then you move into your next scenario. So each one of these, we've already gone past one. It's a campaign. Of course, it's solo. This is scenario two. We already saw scenario one. It tells you how many waves you're doing, what opponent you're going up against, and honestly, how you set it up, as I mentioned. But each setup is going to be totally different. Sometimes you're going to have holes in the middle of the setup. And other times, I imagine, yeah, you're going to have like completely different layouts every single time, which is really cool because this book was catered to solo players. So we're probably going to find some pretty interesting designs here as we go along. Some of these are you're spread quite far apart. There's only really one way to get there. Moving right along here, you got like three coming at all angles. So obviously a lot more going on in that one with different fortresses involved. And there's another different layout. And now we're obviously into different factions as well as we go through this. There's, uh, oh, that's pretty cool. Like Vengeful Strike. Very interesting indeed. Oh, there's an interesting, wow. Okay, that's that's taken the long way around. So there's a, a very interesting trek to the other fortress there. Ah, there we go. More kind of uh, circular map. Very much uh, gives you a lot of options in terms of movement, but probably a lot of things you have to defend against. That's an interesting one. A nice gap and a separation where you have to kind of go around. So when you get into that kind of design for the scenarios, it's quite interesting to me because it's like, oh, there we go. Now we're talking like stuff like this. I love because just like that is so unorthodox in terms of its setup, but like that just, just will lend itself to the strategy involved in trying to beat it. Uh, it's going to be very interesting, very different when you get to stuff like that. So that's cool. And then this one, like, look at that. Broken out across two different paths. There might even be some rules to traversing across those two. Who knows? So that's pretty interesting. We're already up to 70 pages, which is pretty insane. What I really want to get to now at the very back of this rule book, after I get through the rest of these, is I want to get to this endless mode. And I want to see quickly if my guess on whether or not it really is just wave after wave after wave because if that's the case that is great because that is a mode that a solo player could just go on to challenge themselves to see how far they could go so here's a setup for it you set yourself up like this you it appears that yeah maybe i don't know i'm not going to read through all these but it's possible that they are going to maybe go into this slot and come after you i don't know how that's going to work but uh it looks like you've got all the yeah yeah there's the waves 
So I guess I was right. So you got, um, you know, your different ways all the way through to 28, which is just insanity. So again, just challenging yourself to go after the ways and defending against them. And then, oh, there we go. That makes sense too. They've got themselves the solo campaign rank and solo campaign rank uh, with the expansion, which we're not going to see in this video, but we'll see in another video. So you can rank yourself along. That's pretty awesome too, because it's always fun as a solo player to kind of check your scores versus other people. And you've got quick reference here as well for some of the new things that you should be aware of, as well as that quick, you know, kind of in addition to the quick reference from the rule book. The last book in the packet is the Cooperative Scenario book. So let's open this one up and see what's inside. We got ourselves solo and co-op mode rules up top. Hex key again. AI talent triggers masterless. We got some co-op scenarios. It looks like there's two per faction all the way through. And I'm guessing, again, the format of what we saw in the prior book is going to be very similar. But of course, the layout and some of the rules will be uh, tweaked as they need to. So you got your hex key again. Now, what I don't know is if this hex key is exactly the same as one we just saw. It probably is, would be my guess. You got your AI talent master. So there could be some repetition between these books, but then it all changes as soon as you get into this area here for the chapters for this co-op. Because you can see, bam, 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 you've got multiple fortresses in play here. So it gets quite interesting. You're going up against all kinds of stuff. So these are going to be probably bigger in terms of the scale than would be my guess. I could be wrong. But uh, the, the layouts for these are likely to be larger. But uh, they are different. Nice, you got some tiles that are coming in in certain uh, specific waves. That's pretty awesome. I'm loving the artwork, by the way, on the sides. Like every time you open up one of these pages and you get the setup, you also get that flavor text, but you get some nice artwork that kind of goes along with it to give you a reason as to why you're even doing what you're doing. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. Very unique layouts here. So cool, so cool. It looks like they really did uh, a pretty awesome job on uh, going, in terms of the amount of content and uh, you know variation of what's available and how you can play this game. I think they've really done a good job at making an all around package. This could have easily stopped it being just a player versus player type situation, but adding in co-op, adding in solo, they have now checked all the boxes and that's just brilliant on their end. So. Again, that is a rough summary here of this 55-page booklet for the cooperative scenarios. Next up, we have the reference sheets for each of the different factions inside the game. Another thing to note about the components in this game is you're gonna notice that some of them look like they're just regular cardboard, like if you spilt a drink on them, you'd be toast. But I wanted to let you guys know that the components, especially things like reference sheets and things like that, they're impossible to destroy. Like they literally are made of like PVC material. You could literally put them in the tub, pull them out and they would be perfectly fine after drying them, which is awesome in terms of the quality that Chip Theory Games puts into the game. Most of you will know this from Too Many Bones, uh, that most of that game, except for the rule book itself, could be pretty much submerged inside of a tub and played and then taken out. Now, why you'd ever do that, I don't know, but it would certainly be a lot of fun. But anyway, going back to this particular reference sheet layout of five, we've got one for each of the factions I mentioned. You got some flavor text up top and some different information you want to read there. You got your fortress advancements. Very important to know how your source drill works, your honor pit, your stronghold, gate port, smelter, and assembly. These are all going to give you some help because every faction in the game is very different. You're not going to be using the same faction in the same way when you pick up the next faction. There are going to be differences. There's core mechanics that stay the same, but the factions work differently, and these reference sheets are going to help you understand that. Flipping this over to the opposite side, you're going to see the talents that are also specific to this particular faction as well. You can pause the screen if you want to read them. Next up. We've got another faction here, and again, flavor text up top. We've got, again, the advancements down below. You'll already see differences from what you saw on the previous sheet. Flipping this over to the back side, very different. You'll see the talent sheet on this one is very heavy compared to the other one. And there may actually be factions in this game that are better or that are more recommended to actually use on your first couple playthroughs. There might be some factions that are more involved. That's something that's also quite familiar to players from Too Many Bones, where certain gear locks are easier to use when starting out and others are more advanced. Here's another faction involved as well. Again, very different 
layout here. We got like Academy Peak, Airstrip, like some of these locations even in terms of what's on their fortress is different as well and even mentioned differently. So that's pretty awesome. Again, the whole point is to give you a completely different feel for each of the different factions that you're playing. And then again, you've got all of your talents listed out on the back. Moving on to the next one, the Grove Tenders here. We've got more fortress advancements across a number of different areas. Pausing the screen will help you to read all of those. Flipping them over to the opposite side, you've got the Grove Tender Talents as well. And last but not least, we have the Landmark Talents. And that is a list of Landmark Talents down below. Flipping this over to the opposite side, we've got the Merc Talents. Inside the box was also another one of these faction sheets for one of the factions we've already seen and that's because this was one of them that was replaced as per the letter that I showed you earlier and it was really easy to see that based on it being wrapped in plastic and saying replace the sheet with this one. So essentially this is one of the corrections that was made after the fact. So this is the correct version versus the one you've already seen. Flipping this over to the other side you might even notice some of the changes, but this was one of the factions that had the long list of talents. Next up inside the box, it looks like we're gonna be running into the Neoprene Isles. So let's go ahead and pull that tray out. It may appear at the bottom of those that the fortresses are also in this. You'll also notice that the packaging for this game is off the charts. Each one of these larger areas with tiles in them has a fully hard plastic shell around all the components, keeping them in tip top shape and easily storable, and also very easy for setup when you pull them out later on. Now to get closer to those eight neoprene aisles and the four neoprene faction fortresses we're going to take off the top to this case one thing i will point your attention to is in the very center of this case you've got cloud spire the logo embedded right in there which is a nice artistic touch and there you go you've got your tile so let's go through these one at a time so let's go ahead with these eight neoprene aisle mats and see what they look like. Again, you'll see all kinds of different terrain on them. I'm not gonna to speak to that, but you'll see that each of them are broken up into multiple hexes. And some of them obviously are pass. Others are kind of a forest area. You've got some water in there as well. And they all serve their purpose for different things. So we'll continue on through these mats. These again are high quality neoprene mats. This is what the back of them look like, which you could expect from a neoprene product. This is another one of the aisles that can come out during your gameplay. Here is another, they're all vastly different in terms of their layout. This again is gonna add into uh, the gameplay itself in terms of your strategy. If I'm not mistaken, I believe this is the one that sits at the center of the game. I could be incorrect, but it looks like it might be the one. We've got another one right here. And another one right here, as we're going through the eight total. Very, very cool. The, the artwork and the color on them are also very, very visual and also very bright and uh, rich in terms of what you're looking at. You got uh, a pit of what looks like fire there and you got a well over there. So some interesting things. It looks like that's maybe a wagon. Uh, there's a blood stain even on the road there. So that doesn't spell so well for travelers. Here is an up close look at the faction fortresses. You're gonna see some things that you probably noticed on the faction reference sheets earlier on. Things like source drill, assembly, honor pit, gate port, stronghold, all those things. But you're also gonna notice You've got these slots here for chips. This is something that was designed during uh, the Too Many Bones games where they had the day counter actually embedded a chip inside of one of these die cut areas, or in this case, chip cut areas, and you can turn it to track, in this case, source or your health. And in Too Many Bones, it was to track the day. So they pulled that over, which was fantastic because they really enjoyed tracking things inside the neoprene mats. That was very, very cool. And they've done that here and stepped it up by actually adding some kind of pinhole trackers as well to track your source drill uh, upgrades and things Things like that plus some die cuts as we're familiar with from too many bones as well so it is a little bit difficult to see straight through some of these holes because of course there's other fortresses below it with a different layout but i will try to lift this up so you can actually see that there are some die cut holes there moving right along to the next faction again they're all going to look visually different for sure being that they are even going to be playing so different but here is the next one and I'll lift this up again so you can easily distinguish where those die cut areas are because sometimes again they're a little tough to see. Next one right here very very cool looking again they're all so unique love that border that's awesome with all the roots kind of going around everywhere very very cool. Here is another one 
This one looks to be, ha, huh, this one looks to be kind of like the bird faction. You got the nest in there as well. That's pretty cool. The roost, I should say. That's pretty awesome. So I wanted to draw your attention back to the casing that I pulled these two items out of because I wanted to show you the bottom of it when it's empty. You can see there's two levels of definition there. One for the fortresses, which I'm going to place in first, and then the neoprene aisles on top. I really think they went the extra mile in making sure storage of this game was very simple and easy to do. So you, also everything kind of has its place. You just kind of press it down and you can place everything inside of the area that it should be. And you're not going to have any issues trying to figure out where things should go once they go back into this packaging. And now we'll go ahead and put the neoprene aisles into the case as well, pushing them into their slot. And it fits just like that. Looks absolutely awesome. And then of course, once you put the case back on top, it's as simple as that to get everything back inside. And just when you think you've made some headway in the unboxing, you realize there is so many more gorgeous components to pull out and take a look at. I mean, just looking at them inside the box alone makes you drool a little and makes you excited to dig a little further in. So how about we grab a couple things around the outside first and we'll make our way down to that chip level in a second. So the easiest one to pull besides this uh, packaging here with some cards in it is we're going to grab this right here because these are empty. And these, you might be wondering what exactly they are, but they are considered, and there's four of them, barracks, chip organizers and it's gonna be hard on screen to see those because they're stacked so they have this weird glare thing going on but i'm going to take one of them away or i should say i'm going to pull one of them off so that you can only focus on the one it'll make a lot more sense but essentially what it is is it's a tray given to every player per faction so that you can have your barracks chips set up and ready to go your army ready to go and off the table kind of keeps them in a nice organized cluster and allows you to easily shuffle them around the game board wherever you want them versus moving chips around at a constant pace so that's a really really nice addition into the game and if you know chip theory games from too many bones and hopamacus making trays like that are pretty standard so Moving around the outside again, we've got a dice tray right here. This is more so reminiscent of what they would include inside of Too Many Bones to hold dice. And they brought that across to Cloudspire as well because it works so well. The coolest thing about this, not only the dice inside, but the tray itself actually can be used with the lid flipped upside down in order to make two trays, which I think is fairly awesome. So what you can do is get two trays out of one actual closed box. So if I flip this over, you'll see Chip 3 Games is embroidered right on the front there. If I flip it over, you've got yourself an area to put your dice because the lip of the edge also works as well, just as well as the actual kind of more recessed version like this, which is the way you technically should be doing it. I just found that it was kind of cool that you're able to get two dice trays out of one set. But here are some of the Cloudspire dice and you'll see that they are very vibrant, they're very pretty, and they have some pretty awesome icons on the dice. Like this one here has a bird on it with a number three you've got some here that have like a sword with a one on it um, again some of these for combat some of them for other reasons of which i will learn as i go along but i wanted to show you guys these up close and personal Next up, we have a case here, very similar to the larger one for the aisles. These are for neoprene earthscapes, and earthscapes are smaller. There's only three hexes inside of each of them. The purpose of them is they're gonna be used to actually shape shift and change the actual terrain in the game that's already placed. So things like aisles will have shape shifting stuff going on where you're gonna have something like this, or earthscaping in this particular case, gonna be placed on top of these tiles to change the terrain that's on them, which is really, really cool. So again, comes in the same type of box as the other one, except at a smaller footprint. And what we'll do is we'll take these eight out of the box. All right, so let's go through these tiles one at a time. You got some wonderful blood smearing in the streets there. You've got yourself what looks to be kind of a cave with potentially some source in there, mountains and whatnot. Again, this could be wrong. That might not be mountains at all. That might be a resource of some kind. Maybe it is part of the source, but I think anywhere I'm seeing this blue area is maybe where the source can be retrieved from. That I will be finding out soon enough. But uh, at the very least, the terrain and also just the sheen on these tiles in general, they're very high quality. That's something that I didn't show you with the other aisle uh, neoprene mats is I didn't actually move them around on camera, but they're, the finish on them is very, very high quality. They look really, really good. So we're gonna move right along here because we're familiar with some of these, but some of them are different and have a couple different uh, terrain elements that I haven't seen before, different layouts. And again, the coolest part is going to be able to overlay uh, these particular Earthscape tiles on top of those aisle tiles. And that's really going to change up the game strategically, um, hopefully in your advantage is, the, is probably the hope. So there we go. There are the eight 
Earthscape tiles inside the game. They're gonna go back inside this box and then we're gonna dig around in this thing a little bit more. One other thing you're probably starting to notice is that the inside of the box obviously has artwork, which is something that's more of a staple with chip theory games and the games they put out in the past. I can't remember off the top of my head if Hoplum Mox has had it. I don't believe it did, but Too Many Bones is where I believe it started. And it has continued since then and it's a really nice touch to make the inside of the box a lot more appealing than just a brown cardboard box inside. So I really do appreciate that. It definitely adds adds to uh, the flavor and the, uh, the excitement level of opening up this product and also the visual effect of it. So there is some artwork that's gonna be hard to see from the angles, but some water over here and some different things like a cobbled road for a street path that you guys can see here. Something on this other side, you're probably not gonna see unless you pick the game up, but we've got some other things to take out of this box anyway. So we could go after the cards here. But what I'm gonna do is wait on the cards. We'll probably do the chips first, do the cards last. Uh, this right here, I'm actually unfamiliar with off the top of my head. This looks like source to me. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Now this is a case that is a design that came from Too Many Bones for sure because we've seen chips be placed in these types of cases in uh, expansion packs in the past. So I'm going to go ahead and pop it off and essentially you're just pulling it straight up and to open it up it's pretty easy. And inside we're going to find ourselves what appears to be a package of what looks to be source and these are the pin these are kind of the uh, trackers or markers that you're going to be using inside of the game in order to mark on your faction uh, fortress. Uh, remember those little pinhole areas. So there is a bag of them right there. Next up, we're going to go ahead and take a look at all the chips inside of Cloudspire, starting with the one that was sitting in this position right here, which I put up top, then this one, then this one, and finally this one over here. That'll cover the whole bottom of the box. There is just some package area right here. And again, this is really useful because later on, for expansion purposes, you do have some places within this core box that they've allowed room to put other contents. So there's a possibility, I'm hoping, that you can get all the expansions inside the core box that would actually be fantastic. I'll have to test that theory later on, but there certainly is enough packaging in there in amongst things. There's also, I'm noticing even with the card one here, it might be hard to see on camera, but there's a punch out area here to punch out another area for another pack of cards. So again, like if it comes from the expansion, those extra cards, you might be able to just fit them right inside. So if they've thought to that level of packaging inside the core box, that is utterly brilliant. But we're going to go through all these chips and we'll see what's inside. So all of these chip trays are going to have the logo on the front. That's not a surprise anymore for chip theory games, but it is lovely that they do include those with the chips to keep things organized. Then you're gonna pull things out. These chips are always packaged very nicely. So you go ahead and just pull all of these chips out. We'll have to rip into each of them, but these ones I believe are standard. So they're gonna be used for, in most cases, fighting and defense and whatnot. So there's gonna be a lot of similarities here. So what you're seeing on the front is probably gonna be throughout every single one of these chips. For the most part, there's a couple on the bottom that are different. The first set of chips to open up here is on the table, and you can see at the very, very top, we have 18 attack upgrade chips. We next have 14 range upgrade chips. Below it, 12 fortification upgrade chips. Then we have four source tracker chips. They're double-sided. This is one of the sides, and this is one of the other sides, and all of them have both of those sides. And then on the far right here, we have one of the faction mark chips. Now let's dig into this second set of chips right here. The very first row of chips inside of this pack of three has all of these inside of it. And it's a mix of faction units as well as spire chips and everything relating typically to one faction, but there could be some crossover between. And what I'll be doing later on is of course, putting these into the correct faction areas. Most of them are packaged well, it's just that I'm not familiar enough with the game just yet to be speaking to these specific chips, which are the major focus of the game and which are from which faction. So from what you're seeing right here, here, this is the first row of chips. Let's move on to the second row. The next row of chips are these ones right here. So you can tell this is absolutely all part of the same faction as even the chip coloring on the sides is all the same. Plus you got your faction chip marker here as well. So this is a good look at one of the factions all laid out. The last row of chips in this particular package has 19 landmark chips. And you'll see that these landmarks have a back that looks like this, or could have a back that looks like this. They're all considered the same, I believe. They're all landmark chips. And you can see at the very bottom here, we also have four of the health dials as well. These are for tracking your health in the gates. And you're gonna see there's two sides to each of these as the same with the source trackers we saw earlier. 
The next package of chips you're going to run into is one that you're going to be familiar with if you've picked up Hoplomachus or any Too Many Bones product in the past. These are the lightweight plastic health chips inside of the game. They're the only chips in the game that are not weighted like the other ones we've already seen. And it's hard to show that on camera visually, but essentially these are just regular plastic, whereas the other poker chips that you've seen already in previous clips, those ones were weighted. So there's a noticeable difference when moving them or placing these health chips underneath of a weighted chip, you'll realize that they don't feel as great. And it's because the weighted chip on top, which is the unit, feels so good because there's so much weight behind it versus these ones that don't have it. So what they do offer on their site is what's called premium health chips, which will give you health chips, a full set like this, but weighted ones so that when you have and you're moving your units, uh, no matter what game you're playing that they have in their catalog in terms of Hoplomachus, Too Many Bones, and Cloudspire, you can put these premium chips underneath and everything feels uniform in terms of the weight. So I went ahead and I picked up those two premium chip packages because I really like the premium health chips. And honestly, it makes a lot of difference when your hands are constantly on the chips, moving your units around the board to have, have everything feeling the same. Plus the really cool thing is too, is if you like a certain set of premium chips in one of the games between like Too Many Bones and Cloudspire, for instance, you could pick up one set and it would technically work across all of them as well. So you could go that route as well if you're trying to save on buying these premium health chips just one set is usually enough to work across multiple games but if you want the artwork as well as the theme of what they've put on top of these chips to fit the game you're playing then you can pick up premium chips that are specific to each product so moving right along to the last package of chips inside the game you'll see that we've got three columns here or rows of chips and these chips are all the same color so we're missing out on three factions that we haven't seen as we saw the light blue one let's go ahead and open these up one at a time I'll show you what each of these faction has chips wise here is a look at the next faction in line you'll see that I took the faction mark chip here and added it in we've already seen that faction mark chip but it does go with this faction here these chips are all gray in color and you can pause the screen in order to take a look at any or all of these chips here is a look at the next faction in line. You'll see the faction marker chip is back in play, one you saw earlier on, but now in amongst the rest of its faction chips, which are kind of a forest green, and you can see all of them by pausing this screen. And last but not least, the final faction inside the box here in front of you. you got the marker for the faction. This particular color is a purple. Again, you can pause the screen to take a look through all the different faction chips here. And last but not least, the cards that we left to the end of the unboxing. These cards come inside this really, really nice high quality box that definitely will stand the test of time. Inside of this, we're going to find things like event cards and relic cards. Let's dive into this and see these cards up close. As I mentioned, there are event cards inside this deck. Here are 12 of them. We're going to take a look at the rest in a second. Feel free to pause the screen to read each of the cards. Here is a look at the next 12 event cards inside the deck. And here's a look at the final five cards to make up the 29 event cards. Next up inside the box, we have 15 relic cards. And you can see there's stuff like Tripwire here, Source Converter, the Father's Chalice, a bunch of really cool ones. We got three more off screen that I'll show you right now. And finally, the three last relic cards to make up the 15 that come inside the base box. We got things like Fortress Portal and Espionage. Next up, an item that comes outside of the base box, something you can pick up as an addition, just like those premium health chips I talked about earlier. This will not be inside the box, but it's such a cool thing to have. Very thematic and also helps you control all your dice rolls in one spot. But essentially, it's a stitched neoprene mat with these clips on either side so that you're able to clip them together to form a dice tray. It's super simple to break down. It's super simple to build. Just click around the outside edges to build yourself the dice tray that you want. And once you've got all four corners clipped in, you've got yourself an area here where you can roll your dice and nothing is going anywhere. The Chip3 logo is on the inside. They've got some nice art on the back. And then again, when you want to store this thing, you simply unclip it and throw it flat down inside the box. 
This is something that they did with too many bones. They started with a leather version, but the issue with the leather version at that time was that every once in a while a cocked eye would get stuck in the corner on a 90 degree angle. That was with the leather version, a version that is not this one. This neoprene mat gets rid of that chance of it ever happening as the side walls are so high that dice will always find themselves right back into the center fully rolled. So that's pretty awesome. And that's going to wrap up the unboxing for Cloud Spire. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope this helps you make an informed decision on whether or not this is something you'd like to pick up. Very exciting for solo players that they have content inside of this box right from the get-go. And of course, there are expansions to add into Cloudspire that we'll touch on at a later date. Thanks again for watching, and as always, keep on rolling solo!